Hello everyone and welcome to Counselor Feature Friday. I'm your host, Brian Urban. In these features we hope to give you some simple tips, tidbits and tricks to make your days easier and your patients happier. In this feature we're going to talk about the AMCLASS system, otherwise known as the Automated Classification of Audiograms. It's a system uh, that has been developed and maintained by Dr. Robert Margolis. It's a system that is embedded right within Counselor to perform an initial classification of the hearing loss. If you are interested in learning more about kind of the details about AMCLASS and it talks about how it's a peer-reviewed audiometric classification system, you can always click on AMCLASS. It will open a link where you can learn more. In this overview, we're going to talk specifically about how it functions, how it can be modified, uh, how it benefits you in the overall workflow within Counselor, uh, as well as a method for disabling it if you wish. So let's start talking about just what it takes for the, the classification to occur. So first off, whether you enter the audiometric data directly into Counselor or you send it over from NOAA, uh, AMCLASS uh, will, will make an automatic classification of the hearing loss. So it doesn't matter how the data gets into Counselor, uh, just that it lands here. Now, it is important, though, which thresholds are, are entered into Counselor. So uh, you do need for air conduction uh, 250 through 8,000 without interoctives. You can have interoctives, of course, but it doesn't require it. Um, for bone conduction, it would be 5 through 4. So pretty straightforward data. If you find that the classification is not occurring, just check uh, on your thresholds and make sure, for example, if you didn't do 8,000 or something, then the classification would not occur. Now off to the bottom right here, <clears throat> we will see the classification. It's broken down into four areas. Configuration, severity, site of lesion, and bilateral symmetry. Okay. So once again, based on the air conduction and bone conduction um, thresholds, it'll perform the initial classification. <clears throat> so if as you are entering the test data directly into counselor, you note that the, uh, some of these classifications haven't occurred yet, that's because the data hasn't been entered, right? So if you haven't entered your bone conduction thresholds yet, well then site of lesion uh, cannot be determined. Um, and if you have instances where you're testing and you can't get bone conduction, for example, that is perfectly fine. I'll show you in a moment how you can, uh, you know, still uh, enter this uh, uh, selection without AMCLASS uh, having detected it. Okay. Um, AMCLASS also performs an initial um, kind of run on the uh, SII uh, and the SIDVHL. So what's looking at here is, of course, it's performing the optimal SII percentage. So looking at the thresholds and determining where the speech intelligibility index. Uh, can be optimized. So it picks the, the, the decibel level, the presentation level um, uh, for word recognition uh, and says, okay, if it's presented at 85, you achieve 97% SI. It does not mean you have to present at 85. It's simply saying that's where it's optimal. It might be 96% at 75 dB, right? So um, the point being is it gives you an initial thought on what the optimal SI would be. Okay, but for the rest of this, we're really going to focus on the classification here. So as we can see here, I've entered thresholds for right and left ears, and we can see that the classification has completed. Now, if we look in the bottom part here, just beneath the audiogram, we can see those same areas, configuration, severity, site of lesion, and bilateral symmetry. These can be modified at any time. So as I noted, if you um, didn't have bone conduction, but you know uh, you've, you've done hearing tests for this patient over time, you know this is sensory neural or whatever the case may be, you can always choose. Uh, your, your option on the fly, right? Um, also, if you disagree, if you said, nah, you know, I, I think this is more like normal to moderate, right? Uh, you can always change that. Now, a common question we get up is how, how does AMCLASS actually determine these, right? It's actually a fairly complex formula that I can't give you the answer for. Dr. Bob Margolis has built the system, and it, it does build in speech weighting into this process. So the simple fact that you have a threshold, let's say here, at 20 at 250, that is, you know, essentially in the normal range does not necessarily mean it'll start at normal, right? Because it's it's taking speech weighting into effect and saying, well, it's at 35 at 500. So it's not as simple as just looking at one threshold to make a determination on the start and end points of the severity. It's looking more at how uh, this would affect the patient's ability to hear uh, common, you know, uh, uh, average level speech. Okay, so that's where you know you are always going to be the best person to determine how to describe this hearing loss. This is your patient. You're doing the testing. So on the fly, once again, you can make any change you like. You can change the severity. You can change the uh, configuration, the site of lesion, the symmetry. That's entirely up to you. 
uh, you can do that very quickly. You can do that for uh, either ear, right? So you can operate these independently, okay? Now, once you have the uh, classification in place, whether this is leaving what's there or you make a change, let's look briefly at how this can benefit you later in the workflow. So very simply, if we jump to the profession report here area here and we go to edit results, if we add a template like one here where it's going to auto fill in the symmetry, the pure tone results for each year, just by doing that, that one click added the template. And now we can see the classification of the hearing loss is in the report. That means you do not have to type out the classification of the hearing loss for each patient, right? Um, it keeps things consistent patient to patient, whether you are uh, so a solo provider in your practice or you have an office with 50 providers and in, in loads of locations and you want common classifications, okay? It, this also means that because this is all classified, you can search across your patient database for specific classifications of hearing loss. You can do so through the search patient visits tool. You can also do, do so uh, via the visit report uh, generator, right, where you can see classifications of hearing loss and do system-wide searching, okay? So kind of back to our workflow here, uh, we have the classification in place. Uh, the other way, in a very significant way, can assist you <clears throat> is with determining IC10 codes. So by clicking on auto calculate codes, counselor courses can look out to the entire encounter, the case history plus the test results, and help you determine the appropriate codes. The first one that shows up here, this H90.3 uh, bilateral sensor hearing loss, is directly from the classification that was made in the audiogram. Right, so uh, it takes that information out. This is a pretty straightforward one, but if you had a more complex hearing loss, if you had mixed hearing loss in the right ear and conductive in the left, those codes get kind of tough. Um, so the uh, counselor will utilize the M class classification, translate that into the related IC10 codes for that specific patient encounter. So once again, it provides consistency across your visits, not only for yourself, but if you have a staff, if you have many audiologists and hearing health providers who need to do coding, uh, you can do so very, very easily. Okay, so once again, so that's the benefit of utilizing the system, the automatic classification, uh, modifying it, making sure it fits your needs, and then you know seeing the advantages throughout the rest um, of the system, not only for this encounter, but searching throughout the system later on. Now, you also have the ability here under administration and then visit options if you would like to disable the automatic classification. What this basically means is, okay, you say, all right, by default, this is automatically enabled, but you can uncheck this and then save. And what that means is that when you either enter audiometric thresholds directly into counselor or you send them over from NOAA, AM class will not automatically perform the classification. You then can go through and select the different options that you wish. Now, it's important to note that in that case, you would need to select all four categories, right? Uh, the configuration, the severity, the slope, and the uh, uh, symmetry. Right? If you leave M class enabled, and let's say three of the four were correct, or you agreed with them, uh, then you just need to change the one. Right? So you may want to think about uh, how you wish to proceed. Uh, typically, the vast, vast majority of time, this is left enabled, and you just essentially kind of make the small modifications that you need. If you prefer to start from scratch, as I mentioned, you can disable this, save, uh, and I should note, that this is a clinic-wide setting. So if you make this change, it will affect everyone uh, in your organization. Okay, but once again, if you do have any questions about the AMCLASS system itself, we do encourage you to go to the AMCLASS site to read more about it, to understand how it works and how it was validated. Uh, but ultimately, we hope that this is a great tool that speeds up uh, not only your report writing and your coding, but also gives you the ability to have uniform classification across all of your audiograms. So thank you very much for joining us for today's Feature Friday. And as always, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.